Hey guys, welcome to chapter one, section two. This is introduction to WordPress and content management. And in this section, I'm gonna mostly be going over what WordPress is, um, what it needs to run, and I also wanna go over uh, structured hosting versus hosted. So what is WordPress? WordPress is a free open source blogging platform slash CMS that runs on PHP and MySQL. And I say bl blogging platform slash CMS because it is, it's an all out blog tool, but it's also a website content management system. Um, if you look at a straight content management system like Joomla or Drupal, um, they allow you to create pages for your websites um, and link those pages to menus. And you can also install third party extensions to extend the functionality. Um, WordPress does absolutely all of that. So it, it's a full CMS and a full featured CMS and blogging platform. Now it runs on PHP, which is a server-side language, server-side scripting language, and MySQL is a relational database system. So all your posts, categories, pages, images, everything stored in a MySQL database. Uh, WordPress was released in 2003 and there are hosted and self-hosted versions of WordPress available and I'm gonna go over both of those and I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of each but from this point on um, the, the, the series is gonna be focused on the self-hosted version the version that we actually download and then install on our own word our own server uh, WordPress is the most comprehensive and flexible blogging platform to date um, it's used in 48% of the top 100 blogs in the world and there's over 70 million websites that use WordPress. These may or may not be blogging sites, they may just use the CMS, but there's 70 million WordPress sites out there which is pretty impressive. Alright, so the minimum specifications. Uh, ideally you want a Linux Apache web server and I mean, WordPress will run on Windows IIS server, but it's not recommended. Uh, I've had issues with it, and, and a lot of people have had issues with it. So it's really recommended that you have a Linux server. And most, most of the big hosting companies like GoDaddy, HostGator, Bluehost, JustHost, those all, they're all Linux servers, unless you specifically ask for a Windows server. But all the big companies usually use Linux. Um, it's, it's just better all around for, for open source applications. Um, you could also use an NGINX server, which I don't have experience with, so I can't really shed any light on that. Um, but supposedly it, it runs fine on that. Um, XAMP, WAMP, and MAMP, which are all they're all lo uh, Apache servers that can run on local machines. That's what we'll be using. We're going to be using an XAMP installation. Uh, XAMP comes with um, it comes with an Apache server, PHP, and MySQL. So uh, our site, our WordPress site that we build, won't be live on the web, but it'll be absolutely functional um, locally, and that's all we need. Let's see, so PHP, we need version 5.2.4 or higher. Uh, MySQL should be 5.0.15 or higher. And Apache mod, write, mod rewrite module should be enabled. And if you're using, like I said, one of those big hosting companies, uh, most of them have mod rewrite enabled, so you don't have to worry about that. So basically WordPress runs great on the default of most most hosting companies, okay? So you should be fine. All right, so now I want to go over hosted and self-hosted blogging. Now, first we're going to go over hosted and what that means is that your blog, your entire site or blog is is hosted is is kept on wordpress.com servers all right so you don't have access to your your coding files you can go to your blog 
www.wordpress.com and log in and create posts and they'll be live on the web um, but it's it's still it's housed on their server and let's go over some of the pros and cons of this um, the first pro is that it's a hundred percent free you do you don't need to buy hosting or a domain um, if you're going to use word the wordpress.org self-hosted solution you need to find a hosting company and you need to buy a domain name and set it up okay so it's not too much more money to go with the the self-hosted version but this wordpress.com hosted solution is 100 percent free okay and it's it's easier there's no messing with databases files or installations alright so if you're a non tech savvy user which I, I doubt you are because you're watching this video right now um, then then wordpress.com would be good for you for a non tech savvy person because they just have to log in and they in um, just write blog posts yeah, um, upgrades are automatically done for you um, that's a huge pro I think in my opinion um, because sometimes updates can get messy when you do them on your own but what are you gonna do I mean I, I personally would would suggest the self-hosted um, but to each his own okay backups are made for you that's another good one that's another big plus is that your posts your entire site is automatically backed up for a certain amount of time um, alright so cons there's no custom themes you you have to use a pre-made theme you have to search for a, a, a theme you like and use that you can't create your own HTML theme and implement it like you could if it was a wordpress.org self-hosted solution uh, looks le slightly less professional um, if you use your blog dot wordpress dot com for your your blog address that can look a little unprofessional I, I guess it's a matter of opinion um, but you know it's, it always looks better to have your own domain name and to just have full access to your, your files um, you cannot edit any PHP files so you can't extend functionality of the core the core system you can't touch that all right um, and you cannot upload plugins which is a big negative because wordpress.org has so many cool plugins to do so many cool things and you just can't do that if you're using the hosted solution alright so let's go to the self hosted blogging which is wordpress.org and if you're gonna use like we are the self hosted solution you go to wordpress.org and download the package and then you upload it to your host or to your XAMPP server like we'll be doing. Uh, the pros is it looks more professional especially if it is a blog for your business. Um, it, it, it's much better to have your business.com slash blog than to have blog.wordpress.com. Um, you, can, you can install thousands of different plugins and thousands of themes which is definitely a plus um, so you can really customize your site more so than if it was a hosted solution uh, your site is more unique it's more unique because you can customize it more you can create your own theme you can use your company branding and create a whole custom theme uh, granted you'll need to either have some web design knowledge or you'll have to hire a designer or developer um, but nevertheless your site will be more unique um, a self-hosted WordPress website is an actual site, not just a blog. So this means that you'll have an About Us page, contact information, and all that stuff. So you'll have a, it'll be a full-fledged website, not just a WordPress blog. The cons, uh, the first con is that it's easier, I mean it's harder to set up and run, which is very true. You have to download the package you have to edit a config file, you have to create a database um, I mean it might sound overwhelming but that stuff's really pretty easy as you'll find out in the um, the section after the next uh, you need to pay for a you have to, you have to pay for and look for a good web hosting provider um, which isn't that big of a con there's plenty of great hosting providers out there 
um, host gator blue host just host all those all those those hosting companies are pretty good if you have a, a low uh, a small to medium site when you start getting into the um, you know using a lot of resources then you might look into getting a dedicated server but for the most part if you just have a, a medium or small blog then any of those guys will be fine um, backups you need to do on your own which you know it is a con but there are a lot of um, plugins out there that will allow you to install it and then you can create a black up a backup in one or two clicks so not a big deal um, and lastly you need to manually upgrade when a new version is released so that can get a little as long as you stay up on as long as you stay on top of your updates then you should be all right um, if you miss five updates in a row and then you try to go from version A to version F then you might have some problems so you just need to stay on top of the updates and you should be fine alright so the content management system is kinda it's woven into to WordPress um, it's a full featured CMS just like Joomla or Drupal or Typo3 or um, PHP Nuke any of those those systems uh, it can definitely run with those um, ability to create menus with pages on top of posts so um, about us services pages like that um, that aren't blog based that's definitely possible with uh, the content management system contact forms you can you can create contact forms there's a lot of different plugins you can use to have specialized forms with special layouts so that's that's pretty cool um, and then of course there's thousands of plugins available at wordpress.org to extend functionality so if you want an image gallery if you want a, a jQuery slider uh, if you want social network functionality uh, if you want e-commerce you can a WordPress shopping cart is very possible and, and pretty easy to set up so um, the content management system is very powerful so we're going to be dealing with the self-hosted version um, of WordPress and this is just the basic installation and we'll be going through this um, I believe in the chapter 2 section 1 um, we're gonna create we're gonna download XAMP which is a uh, it's an Apache server that will just run on our local machine so we don't have to keep uploading our files to a web host um, and we'll create a MySQL database which is really easy to do um, well of course we'll need to download the zip package from wordpress.org and then we'll unzip those to our website files um, and then you need to edit the WP underscore config file and just add your database credentials for the database that we created in, in step one uh, and then you just go to your domain we're going to be using XAMP so we'll be going to localhost um, slash whatever we choose and that'll bring us right to the WordPress installer and look at it all set up for us and then we can log in and, and start blogging or start configuring it or whatever we're gonna do so that's it for this section uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a at least a basic knowledge or understanding of WordPress and what it is and the difference between self-hosted and hosted um, but you know you'll learn more as we go um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next section